Thank you very much. Now, if you think it's easy to be on this stage, can I just propose a trade very quickly? Can we swap places? <laughs> there is a reason why we think or why we place a high premium on a sense of humor. And the reason is that when we make people laugh, we make them feel happy. We make them feel good about themselves. Now, that is the power of banter. I'm sure everybody sitting in this audience at that one point or the other, you've exchanged friendly, teasing remarks with somebody else. You pulled their legs before. If you've ever pulled someone's legs before, can I see your hands up? Hug them all together, you get me. Today, I'm here to talk about banter. But I know that banter taken too far can have devastating consequences. In fact, a study carried out by Institute of Leadership and Management found that 4% of people quit their jobs because of negative banter. Can we go? Now, let me tell you the story of Richard Branson. What we know about Richard Branson today is Richard Branson is a billionaire, very rich. But did you know, when Richard Branson was in high school, he struggled with a learning disability now known as dyslexia. Now, at the time, nobody knew about dyslexia. Even Richard Branson himself did not understand the condition at the time. And Richard was called names. What we call classical negative banter. He was called lazy by his teachers. He was called stupid by his friends. He was so devastated and demoralized that he quit school at 15. Now, Richard is not alone. There are so many Richards who have quit school because of negative banter. So I'm not here to endorse negative banter. I'm not here to endorse any form of banter that pulls people down or makes people feel inferior. I'm not endorsing that. But I'm here to ask a simple question. What if banter could change your life? What if banter could save your life? All right. <laughs> now, this is when I was in university, but let's rewind the clock. I went to a from Lawal University. No, 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 let's stay here. I went to a from Lawal University, and uh, I don't want to start a war. I know there are a lot of UI students here, so let's not start a war. <laughs> but let's rewind the clock a little bit. Let's go back to when I was in primary school. So when I was in primary school, I was about four to five years, and I would hear comments like, why do you walk like a lady? Right? Now, I'm sure some of you are already looking at me right now, you're watching the home. So I'm still walking. <laughs> still walking like a lady. <laughs> right? And I read these comments over and over again. Right? And I was just four or five at the time. I didn't know how to deal with it, so I would just basically close my ears. And basically, I, I got used to ignoring it. Then I went to secondary school. And then I heard a new one. It was, why are you walking so funny? So I heard that all through my GSS uh, class, my SS class too, and they'll say, oh, why are you walking? You're walking in a funny way. And so I heard that over and over again, that if I want to say, oh, you're walking so funny, I'll say, oh, thank you, bless you. <laughs> yeah, I was already used to it. That was my coping strategy. Basically, just ignore them. It was my coping strategy. And then I went to university, and the banter graduated. So, in university, I heard a new one. It was very new. Um, it was not why you walk funny or why you walk like a lady. Instead, I started hearing, why do you walk like a robot? <laughs> now, that was a new one for me because I know robots do like this, this, right? Just like I'd been doing all through my primary and secondary school, I decided to play the ignore card. I basically didn't listen to them. I've been walking like a robot, duh. Some years later, my ex-girlfriend saw my back one day and said, ah, Baker, your back looks funny. I'm like, funny, how? Huh? He said, eh, it just looks funny. I'm like, oh, okay. Right? And I did not pay any attention. Now, sometime last year, I went to the hospital, University College Hospital, UCH, here, and I went to complain about difficulty breathing. And the doctor said, okay, pull off your shirt. I mean, standard procedure, nothing serious. But then he was on his way out to another room, and then he thought, I guess he wanted to look at something else, and he saw my back, and he was like, wow, this is scoliosis. I'm like, excuse me? I'd never heard anything like that before. I'd never heard the term before. He said, this is scoliosis. Now, I want to call the senior colleagues, and then they came into the room, and they were talking to no students. I'm like, 
scoliosis, scoliosis, what is scoliosis? Right there, that was when I started Googling, I'm like, scoliosis. Now today, I am 28 years of age, 28. How come I missed the signs for 27 years? How come people in my immediate family did not know that I have scoliosis for the first 27 years of my life? This is the reason why I'm talking about banter today. So you can understand that when you hear some of these funny comments thrown at you, when banter, funny things come at you, don't play the ignore card. Do not play the ignore card. Now I'm going to talk more about that in a bit. Let's move on. In order to understand why everybody needs the signs, including myself, I would like to talk to you a little bit about scoliosis. Now, the normal spine is straight. Now, I can see some of you already checking your back. <laughs> the normal spine is straight, but with scoliosis, the spine is curved. Now, the curve is usually an S or a C. Scoliosis. Mine is more of an S, right? So this is how scoliosis looks like. This is how it looks like. Now, the reason why it's so difficult to catch scoliosis, let's move on, let's move on. The reason why it is so difficult to catch scoliosis is that sometimes the healthiest people you can find, the most celebrated people you can find, actually struggle with scoliosis. So, ladies and gentlemen, I introduce you to Usain Bolt. Now, Usain Bolt is arguably the best sprinter of this generation. Legendary. I mean, when you look at somebody like Usain Bolt, you know, you go like, wow, nothing can be wrong with this guy. I mean, you expect everything to just fall perfectly in line. But what if I told you that Usain Bolt was born with scoliosis? Now, just like a lot of people who suffer scoliosis, Usain Bolt, of course, encountered these banters, but he did not pay attention, not until he was 18. 2004. That was when Usain Bolt knew for the first time that he had scoliosis. And the reason why Usain Bolt even discovered was because he was surrounded by trainers, he was surrounded by medical personnel, and he kept complaining about injuries. So that was why they were able to spot it. Now the question is this. What if Usain Bolt had not been involved in athletics? What if Usain Bolt was just surrounded by medical personnel? Would he have had a glittering career? Would he have been able to overcome scoliosis? Would he have become the greatest sprinter of his generation? Now, let's talk about scoliosis a little. The symptoms. Now, the reason why scoliosis is so stealth, stealth mode, is that you don't feel the symptoms. You don't begin to feel the symptoms unless it advances to an extent. So, when you begin to feel the symptoms, the symptoms that you feel are back pain, right? A lot of back pain, a lot of back pain, chest pain, difficulty breathing. And then who are the most vulnerable groups of people that have scoliosis? Kids ages 8 to 14. It is usually within this age, even though quite a number of people are born with scoliosis, but kids within this age are vulnerable. Also, girls are eight times more likely to get scoliosis than boys. So, for instance, if you have a younger one, or you're in a family, or you already have kids, females, you should check them. Also, a child whose parent or sibling has scoliosis, these are the people who are the most vulnerable to this. Let's move on. Now, detecting scoliosis can be as tricky as solving a jam question. And the reason is simple. In order for you to detect scoliosis, you have to do funny things. And when I say funny things, I'm not kidding. For instance, if you want to catch scoliosis, right, you need to watch when someone wears clothes, when someone is wearing a clothes, sometimes there will be a slight gap. As you can see from the first diagram, there can be a slight gap between the ribs. This is why it is very difficult to catch you know, diseases like scoliosis. It's very difficult for you yourself to know because you are used to a particular pattern. Your life has been, you know, you just wake up, you wear the clothes. So sometimes it is people who are not in your immediate environment that will notice those funny things. And usually what happens is they throw a banter at you. They just say, oh, why is your clothes hanging? They cannot interpret what they're saying. The way they can interpret what they're saying is by throwing a banter at you. Now, instead of you ignoring it, you have to pay attention. Another way to detect scoliosis, of course, is the shoulders. So, if the shoulders are not even, right? And I know, of course, I can see all of you looking at my shoulders right now. <laughs> if the shoulders are not even, sometimes it can be very slight, right? Then that's another way to know if a person has scoliosis. Now, this is the forward bend. When you have a normal spine and you bend forward, it's straight. 
But someone that has scoliosis, you would notice, you know, the rib cage. There would be like a gap, something like that, as you can see from the diagram. Then, of course, the last one, which I want to talk about, is the gait, the walking style. If you pay attention to Usain Bolt, you would know that Usain Bolt has like a pimp when he's walking. Now, the thing is that people have different coping strategies. If you watch Usain Bolt, you would think he's bouncing. How many of us have noticed that? Yeah, yeah. You would think Usain Bolt is bouncing. It's actually scoliosis. It's not bouncing. As why he's still walking, so I don't know what you want to accuse me of, you know, in the of now. Maybe I'm walking like a robot, or like a lady, or how funny we are walking. But you know, it's, it's scoliosis. So that's one of the ways to detect. Now, do you know what? A lot of people that have diseases like scoliosis do not know because they grew up that way. So it, sometimes it takes people outside your external environment and because they cannot interpret what you're saying, they will throw jokes at you. They will throw banter at you. Let's move on. Now, scoliosis is just one out of a long list of diseases that can stay eating for donkey years. You can imagine that I had scoliosis for 27 years and I did not know. Now, scoliosis is not the only disease here. Even though my talk now sounds like um, an awareness campaign for scoliosis. And it is, but it is much more than that. It is about we paying attention to the subtle signs, to the subtle banters, you know, that people try you. It is about paying attention. Now, for instance, some of us here have bad breath, but we don't know. Let me give you an example. So you open your mouth, and then suddenly everybody in the rooms begins to think that you. <laughs> you see, it is very difficult for people to walk up to a beautiful lady and say, your mouth is smelling. Very difficult to walk up to a guy and say your mouth is smelling. But some of those subtle cues, sometimes they can even tell you, you know, ah, ah, eh, take your teeth to Alabafo, right? Go and wash it. Sometimes it can be very hurtful, right? But do you know that if you have bad breath, which, you know, is called halitosis, it could be a sign of a bigger, bigger health issue. So if there's somebody like that, or you've been having such views, I beg you, go see your dentist immediately. Now, what if, for instance, you go to the toilet to ease yourself, to pee, every minute? What about that? And then people tell you, you know, maybe in the workplace, or your friends, and they tell you, ah, ah, bros, you'll be water corporation. <laughs> that is exactly how they'll tell you, because they cannot see what is wrong. What they can see are the signs and the symptoms. You may not see it because you're already used to it that way. In fact, some of us will wake up like two, three times in the middle of the night, you know, to be. And you think that nothing is wrong. But it is the people around you who would throw a banter at you. And then, this could actually be a subtle clue also for another serious medical condition. Now, how about snoring? You see, some of us snore so loud that we can wake up a city. <laughs> What is the big deal? Is it not snoring? What if I told you that that snoring could be a sign of lung or throat cancer? In Africa, a lot of us don't go to the hospital except we are dying, except something is wrong, right? We do not go. But these are signs. There are signs all around you. People are trying to communicate with you. They may not communicate with you in a way that you like or in a way that you understand, but there are always signs. Now, how about your handwriting, for instance? Let me shock you. Do you know? that if your handwriting, now I know some of you are already thinking, like my handwriting, right? <laughs> no, don't worry, don't check the note of your partner. Don't check the note. Now, if your handwriting keeps reducing in size, month by month, do you know that that could be a sign of Parkinson's? And these are serious conditions, but they do not happen immediately. Some of these diseases happen over years, sometimes decades. How about this? Cough. How many of you have had a nagging persistent cough before? A lot of us, right? Now, when are you supposed to take that cough seriously? You see, when you have a cough that refuses to go and you don't have asthma, you don't have sinus issues, and that cough refuses to go, it is a sign of something that is wrong. Now, your friends would probably tell you things like, ah, why are you coughing like a bass speaker? They may say some, some things like that. And you may not necessarily like the things that they say, but these are the signs. These are subtle clues. Banters are warning signs. Let's move on. All right. So, I work at EPA, you know, and we're a digital legend. Sometimes in the middle of very serious work, somebody just cracks a joke, right? Or, you know, throws a banter. Now, I have a confession. I'm usually the ringleader. And 
you probably think that ah, banter, so what's the use of banter at the workplace? Let me tell you. Banter at ePower, for instance, helps make the environment fun. It makes the you know the, the atmosphere everywhere is fun. You love to come to work. As a matter of fact, sometimes we have to beg our people to close to go to to go home. Because they're really like it's 7 p.m. you don't want to go home. But you know what? Beyond the fun in the workplace, one thing that Banton does is that it helps to build a team and empower our people. And you might want to ask, how exactly can Banton do that? Let me show you. So I would like to tell you the story of our new marketing intern. She joined us a few weeks ago. Her name is Omotola. Isn't she beautiful? Yeah. yeah, thank you very much. Now, of course, please don't come with me after this program for our number. <laughs> All right? So, Omotola joined us. And when she joined us, she was walking like a man. Yeah. Now, of course, naturally, you know, there were a few banter children around. But from my own experience, I understood what it meant to ignore banters and I knew some repercussions that could follow. I knew some things that could follow. So I asked her, I reached out to her, and I said, Amatola, do you know that you walk like a man? And then she was like, wow. I actually just grew into walking like this without necessarily consciously knowing. And then she did open up to me about how this has been affecting her confidence and how she didn't even really see the need to be feminine. So, thanks to some cool YouTube videos, and I hope you know there are so many YouTube videos on how to walk like a lady, how to act like a lady, and thanks to Pinterest, a lot of study on her part, and a lot of practice, now, she not only dresses like a queen and a princess, she walks and talks like a princess. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Let's move on. So let's go back to my story. Now, my friends in school, university, secondary school, culture, primary school, they saw something. I heard something, but I just didn't know what it was. Now, instead of paying attention to the banter, instead of paying attention to some of those jokes, some of those things that were eating me, I decided to close my ears. It was my coping strategy. Now, let me tell you this. If the doctor had not seen my back as a last year, I'm telling you that right now i will probably be in very, very severe pain. Because between the time I knew and now, I've made a lot of adjustments in my life. The things that I eat, the way I sit, where I sit, and all because of a detection that happened just last year. Now, imagine if we had detected scoliosis. Imagine if at 26, 25 years ago, the curve would have been totally arrested. So what am I saying to you? What is my message today? When someone throws banter at you, don't go defensive. The default option is for you to go into your shell and be angry, possibly with the person, especially if you don't like the way the banter is coming. But what if, what if that person is, a, is saying something that is eating to you? You see, let's go on. When you understand the role and the power that banter can play in your life, you begin to understand better that there are signs, subtle clues that you can miss. There are diseases that take decades to manifest. But it is these banters, turn around, that help you and open your eyes. So the next time someone throws you a banter, please and please, do not close your mind. Instead, try to interpret it. And let me end with this. You see, banter can go beyond just providing entertainment. It can provide education. And like I have found, banter can save your life. Thank you.